Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Managing Project Risk. This is Lecture A. The objectives for managing project risk are to assess project risks, plan project responses, prepare and maintain a risk register, develop and execute a risk management plan. The ISO 31000, a family of standards for risk management developed by the International Organization for Standardization, defines risk as the effect of uncertainty on objectives, whether positive or negative. Even the best, most experienced project manager can't control for every variable, so every project has some risk. Risk can generate from uncertainty in financial markets, accidents, natural causes and disasters, and, of course, project failures. The health IT systems that organizations are implementing to run more efficiently also present more safety and security risks, simply because the system is growing in size and complexity. For example, if a glitch in your CPOE system causes the wrong prescription to transmit to the patient's pharmacy, that risks serious harm to the patient, and it could cause the hospital to risk an expensive lawsuit. So, as you see, managing risk has a direct relationship to patient care. Positive risk events are called opportunities. As the project manager, your goal is to create an environment where positive risk is cultivated while enhancing the constructive outcomes of these opportunities. Negative risk events are referred to as threats, and they can hinder the project objectives. So you will want to create an environment that impedes negative risk while reducing its impact when it does occur. It almost always costs less in both money and time to prevent negative risk from occurring than to take corrective action later. Risk is one of the nine knowledge areas for project management, and its processes impact the activities of other knowledge areas throughout the life cycle of the project. An example of risk affecting other knowledge areas could be in the development of a warning to the provider that a drug pair is not being cross-matched for interactions. Changing the system to include this warning will increase the scope, as well as the schedule and budget, and it may not add to the quality of the information provided to the ordering doctor. However, without this warning, providers may assume incorrectly that this drug pair was screened and safe to prescribe together. Which outcome has more risk? These are the kinds of considerations that you will include in your risk planning. You can't control everything, and every project has its curveballs, small and large. Proactive risk management is key to a successful health IT project. It's something you plan before the project begins, but it's also something that you monitor and control during the project. New risks will arise during the project that you will need to plan for, so these two activities, planning risk and monitoring risk, will coexist throughout the life of your project. The list on this slide shows the major processes involved with developing a risk management plan. The key documents that help you manage project risk include the Risk Management Plan and the Risk Register, which you can develop more or less simultaneously. The Risk Management Plan helps you identify and assess risk. As we noted earlier, risk is defined as the effect of uncertainty on a project's objectives. This uncertainty can vary tremendously across the broad spectrum of health IT projects. For instance, Upgrading a unit to a new version of software that has been successfully implemented in other units could be considered a project with a low uncertainty. Here, because you have identified and controlled for earlier mistakes, you have a history of successful upgrades. At the other end of the spectrum, an example of a high uncertainty project might be implementing an electronic health record system for the first time. If this is a novel project for you with a lot of unknowns, your uncertainty level will be higher. After identifying risks, the next step is to perform a qualitative risk analysis. Qualitative risk analysis often includes input from various stakeholders and considers probability and impact data. This type of analysis helps you prioritize risks for further evaluation, which will include quantitative analysis. 
Quantitative analysis allows you to map a specific value to the risk. Combining these multiple elements in our risk assessment helps us develop a more accurate understanding of our threat level. Once you've used these analyses to pinpoint the high priority risks, you would develop a plan to continuously monitor these risks. Many low priority lists are also monitored because if conditions change, these risks could shift into high priority risks that impact project objectives. Identify and track new risks as they arise and implement risk response plans during your project's progress. As you continue through this identification and assessment process, you will be documenting each step in your risk register. As a risk is pinpointed, enter it into the register. You will update this entry after performing the risk analyses and again after developing the risk response strategies. If changes to the circumstances of the risk arise, enter those into the register as well. The table on this slide shows where each risk management activity occurs during the project lifecycle and its key output. As you can see, five of the six risk management processes occur during the project planning phase, so that really highlights how important early risk management planning is to the success of your project. Now we are going to delve a little more deeply into creating the project risk management plan. The project manager leads the plan with support from selected team members and other stakeholders with expertise in risk management. You will develop the plan with input from such project documents as the scope statement, the budget, schedule, and communications management plans. Consider environmental factors that may have a positive or negative influence on the project outcome and review any applicable organizational materials, such as documentation that details an organization's typical risk management activities. The risk management plan outlines how risk occurs during the project and how it is managed. Generally speaking, it classifies or categorizes risk outlines the response, and describes who or which role is responsible for implementing the response. It also includes the following specific content. Your organization's definition of risk, definitions of risk probability and impact, revised stakeholders' tolerances, reporting formats, information about how you will be tracking the risks, the roles and responsibilities of individuals and organizations are involved in the risk management activity. Your methodology. Information on budgeting and timing. Appropriate risk categories. Some information in this risk management plan, such as assignment of roles, responsibilities, and risk categories, will be input during the Identify Risks process. At this point, we will begin to break down the risk management process a bit. During the Identify Risks process, you will pinpoint and document all project risks that may impact a project. While you began doing this at project initiation, remember that it is an iterative process. You will continue to identify risks throughout the project lifecycle. First, you should gather and review all project information to determine the sources of risks and to identify those that may arise. These documents include the risk management plan, information about schedule, costs and quality, activity cost and timeline estimates, scope baseline, and the stakeholder register. Part of this information gathering process includes meeting with stakeholders to review risk information with them. They may be privy to information that you don't know and that they don't think is important, but which impacts the project. You may want to conduct focus groups or interviews to gather this information. The risk register contains information that you have identified, such as what are the identified risks? What is their probability of occurrence? What is the impact of occurrence? How does that impact different project objectives? Who are the risk owners? What are the proposed response strategies for the risks? What is the current status of each of the response strategies? The register is monitored throughout the life of the project and updated continuously as new risks are identified or there are changes to current risks. 
In project management, the risks tend to cluster into categories. In health IT projects, obviously one of the categories includes technology. For example, the project may be relying on immature technology that has not been adequately tested. Even if the product offers excellent benefits, its novelty or complexity could be considered a risk. Other typical categories for risks include organizational risk. For example, how stable is your funding? Are you dependent on later infusions of money, or do you have all the funding up front? Large or complex projects often do not have all the funding established at the beginning, so you may need to consider backup plans if the money can run out. Another area of organizational risk is staff availability. Do you have all the staff that you need, and do they have the desired skills to work on the project? Are there shortfalls in terms of the number of staff or skill mix that you need? A third risk category is external risks. For example, requirements for legal compliance or issues related to some of your project's suppliers and partners can impact its outcome. What happens if a supplier goes bankrupt or is otherwise not able to provide necessary resources? What about large-scale considerations like the global economy? It's important to consider the effect that might have on your customer community or on the need for the system you are developing. The fourth category of risk is project management. This category recognizes risks that may exist because of insufficient planning. If you have failed to plan for certain activities or contingencies, that can represent a source of risk to the project. Another example of project management risk would be poor resource allocation, such as not using staff in sufficient quantity or in the right roles. Please keep in mind that while these categories are typical, your organization may classify risks differently. For any project, one or more categories of risk may dominate. For example, if your project implements leading-edge health IT, it may feature new technologies that threaten your project independently or through their abilities to interoperate effectively in the new system. And with the increased motivations to implement EHRs across the U.S., the pool of skilled resources could be limited, making resource staffing a higher risk. This concludes Lecture A of Managing Project Risk. In summary, we have introduced risk management concepts, as well as processes and materials that will help project managers identify, assess, and effectively respond to risks in health IT.